Hello, Lana. Welcome to our continuing lessons on the manifested publishing e platform. We are continuing with our subject in human resource management. And today we are going to look at the lesson on uh, human resource administration. And in this uh, human resource administration topic, in our lesson today, we are going to look at uh, employee uh, welfare services. Now, employee welfare services may be provided for matters concerning employees, which are not immediately concerned uh, with their jobs, although uh, they may be connected generally with their place of work. Uh, employee welfare services may be provided as uh, individual or group services. So by this it means some of that, those services may be directly to the individual worker or maybe a group of workers where now you have what you call group services. And in our lesson today, we are going to look at the types of employee welfare services and advantages of providing employee welfare services. So the first part we are going to look at uh, types, uh, types uh, of employee welfare services, uh, employee uh, welfare uh, services, uh, employee uh, welfare services, uh, employee types of employee welfare services. So, Lana, the welfare services that can be provided as a uh, uh, cut across a wide range of uh, services, and an organization will have to pick the services now based on uh, the kind of employees, uh, the nature of work, uh, and sometimes organizations have to have a mixture of uh, welfare services cutting across uh, the objective they want to meet. So one of the welfare services could be transport facilities. Uh, transport uh, services, uh, transport services. So these transport services, <clears throat> some workers may be working uh, maybe in shifts where they cannot rely on uh, public transport, for example. Uh, they may be working, for example, at night. So uh, an organization may have uh, uh, transport facilities may be provided by the employer or <laughs> provided by <clears throat> a third party, a service provider. So the transport fa facility could be uh, from work, uh, from work uh, to uh, homes and vice versa. So from work to homes and from homes to work. So that way then, uh, these employees can be able to take advantage of that. And the way you are seeing, the transport, though not directly connected with work, but it's related to work because when the employees are coming to the workplace, the transportation services are helping them. Then, secondly, you may have what you call canteen, canteen services. Canteen services. So these ones <coughs> may provide meals, uh, meals, uh, maybe at lunchtime or maybe at uh, break time. You might have noticed, uh, dear learner, that some organizations operate in places where uh, if employees were to get out of the organization, they may not be able to get a place where they can get a meal or they may not be able to get lunch uh, very quickly. So an organization may provide uh, canteen services uh, for meals which may be free or may be subsidized as a welfare service. Then there is also the element of treatment, uh, treatment, uh, treatment, or you can say medical services, uh, medical uh, services. So here, uh, the employees themselves, and maybe some of their designated, uh, designated dependents, designated dependents. So uh, maybe an employee, a spouse, uh, a child, or several children. So they may be subjected to some kind of uh, treatment facilities. They can maybe go to a hospital 
where the organization makes arrangements, maybe Kenyatta National Hospital, Mata Hospital, or Medihill, so that way then employees can be able to access those uh, treatment facilities or services in relation to uh, the welfare options they have. Then four, you may have what you call employee counseling services. Employee uh, counseling uh, services. Some organizations extend these uh, counseling services to uh, members of the family uh, and sometimes uh, the extended family so that uh, employees can be counseled maybe on work-related matters, work-related or life-related so that employees can be able to uh, go through certain challenges they may be, might, for example, be facing. So employee counseling services can also be provided as a type of uh, welfare service in terms of uh, assisting workers. Number five, bereavement, uh, bereavement uh, services. When, for example, uh, a family has uh, been, uh, has, for example, gone through a death, maybe of a relative uh, that is covered within that particular range, then an organization may provide the bereavement services maybe provide a house, provide some uh, maybe services that are related to barrios. So that again uh, helps uh, employees and uh, this may be support that may be given in the context of uh, what the family requires. So what some organizations uh, do, they ask the bereaved families to maybe provide an idea of uh, how the organization can support and because of uh, different cultural bearings, then an organization may provide maybe a given sum of money, uh, maybe say 50,000 shillings for the family to be able to carry out uh, uh, maybe the last respect as it were. So that again becomes uh, a welfare service. And then there is also what you call club and professional, uh, professional uh, membership, uh, membership services. Uh, club and professional membership services. So what some organizations do, <coughs> they enlist the members who need to be in certain professional bodies so that uh, those members can be able to access uh, certain uh, services in relation to the clubs or professional memberships that they would want uh, to promote their career. So that again becomes uh, one of the employee welfare services that could be provided. And then. Uh, some organizations, the DLANA, also provide what you call uh, pre-retirement uh, uh, training services. Uh, Pre-retiring training services. So what happens when workers are about to reach retirement, they may want to be assisted to uh, maybe settle down uh, in life. And uh, sometimes <clears throat> workers who have worked for, let's say, 20 years, 30 years, uh, they are going into a life where they now will no longer be working. So some organizations prepare uh, pre-retirement training services for employees within five years, 15 years of retirement. Then those workers are taken through that particular training at the cost of the employer to be able to assist them, to be able to settle down and plan for retirement. And then there is also what you call housing. Uh, housing, uh, housing or accommodation uh, services. So here, an organization may provide uh, actual housing or accommodation uh, services for employees to be able to reside near the areas where they are operating from. And in this housing, they can also be able to stay there with their family members. So that again is an employee welfare service in relation to uh, accommodation. Then uh, there are also subsidized loans. Uh, loans. So an employer may provide uh, certain uh, amounts of money, maybe half a million, uh, 500,000, or maybe one million, as the case might be, but uh, the loans are subsidized as a benefit. So this kind of uh, subsidized, lo subsidized loans can be ac accessed by 
employees and this can be an arrangement between uh, maybe the work the employer and maybe service providers in terms of uh, funding and so on so that again becomes uh, uh, one of the uh, employee welfare services that may be provided then also some organizations may provide a dear learner what you call uh, sporting facilities facilities some might for example provide uh, playgrounds uh, playgrounds some may provide a gym uh, and maybe other facilities so what happens when employees are not working uh, these employees can be able to access these facilities uh, be able to maybe play their sport and also maintain some fitness in relation to uh, their health and so on so these uh, 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 facilities have even seen some organizations for example uh, participate in uh, very high level uh, maybe sports maybe football maybe volleyball and so on and that's why some organizations eventually form uh, some teams that facilitate uh, maybe participate at the league level uh, among others and so on so the sporting facilities also uh, help workers to be able to achieve their objectives then 11 uh, sponsorship uh, for education uh, and training uh, for staff and designated uh, family members uh, family members so what happens uh, dear Lana some organizations uh, uh, may want to enhance uh, the educational standards of staff and uh, maybe their children and spouses for example so they may sponsor uh, maybe a particular fraction they may say if it's a member of staff sponsorship is 100 percent if maybe it's a spouse sponsorship is 80 percent if it's a child sponsorship is 70 percent of the cost that is supposed to be incurred so that again becomes a welfare a service that an organization may provide for members of staff uh, their children and maybe uh, uh, other relatives as the case might be depending on the needs of that particular organization so these now uh, are the types of employee welfare services that may be provided uh, in an organization then uh, we have looked at now the types of employee welfare services we can also have a look at now advantages of providing employee welfare services advantages of providing uh, employee uh, welfare uh, services so the question that may arise is that uh, uh, because if you look at these uh, welfare services you take an example uh, transport services if uh, you are to compute an organization that has for example 100 employees and it intends to provide uh, transport services for these workers who are working 24 hours a day maybe seven days in a week uh, this will be some cost to the organization and uh, one may want to find out why would an organization want to provide uh, uh, welfare services to workers yet it is costly so there are various uh, aspects for example Welfare services may help uh, help in improving uh, employee engagement, employee engagement. Because if you look at it critically, employees who are provided with some of these welfare services, uh, they will also enhance their engagement with the employer and become better employees because the employer is also caring for them. Then secondly, uh, increase uh, employee productivity. Uh, productivity, because if an organization is providing, for example, uh, employee counseling services, then those employees can be able to concentrate on their work and that one can help in increasing uh, employee productivity. Then number three, attraction, attraction of uh employees prospective employees uh, employees prospective 
uh, employees. So what you are seeing, saying here is that uh, if you are looking for a job <clears throat> and you get two organizations offering you a position, then you may want to ask yourself, what does organization A offer? What does organization B offer? So if uh, you look at the two organizations, and one of them is providing canteen services, is providing transport services, uh, club and professional membership, uh, sporting facilities, and so on. Then an organization like that one is likely to attract uh, uh, employees uh, uh, who are looking for uh, uh, good employers. And then number four uh, enhances, enhances uh, the employer. Uh, as an employer of choice, employer of choice. So the employer is able to at least endear uh, himself, the, the organization is able to endear itself to uh, employees. Then this also increases uh, the level uh, of uh, employee retention, uh, employee retention. So once employees come into this organization and, uh, for example, uh, an employee has come into this organization and this employee has uh, four children, for example, uh, four children, and this employee has been told these children will be educated up to university level. So if these employees are continuing with their education, then you can see uh, this employee will remain in that particular organization. So it can also be used uh, as one of the ways of uh, retaining employees in an organization. Then number six, uh, increases the level, uh, the, the employee, uh, employee health and well-being, uh, well-being. So take an example, dear Lana, you are in an organization where an employee is given facilities for sporting, is given facilities for housing, is given facilities for counseling, is given facilities for treatment. So this kind of an employee will not worry much about many things in life. So <clears throat> that again enhances the health and well-being of an organization or maybe the employees in that particular uh, organization. And then there is also uh, 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 brings about uh, brings about uh, a better uh, corporate image uh, corporate image uh, corporate image so the image of this kind of an employer becomes uh, better in terms of uh, that organization uh, being able to attract itself and uh, project itself as a leading uh, brand uh, in the market. Then another advantage is uh, uh, minimizes minimizes uh, the level of uh, conflicts uh, in an organization. Uh, minimizes the level of conflicts in an organization. Because where employees are being provided with all these things, uh, the absence of these uh, particular facilities or services are the ones which normally creates a lot of uh, conflict. So where uh, a good uh, range of uh, uh, facilities uh, or uh, welfare services are being provided, you expect to have uh, less levels of conflicts in that uh, particular uh, organization. Even the quality of work, uh, better uh, quality, of work uh, can be realized, uh, can be realized, and then number 10, increases efficiency, uh, efficiency levels, because uh, as you, we have seen, for example, take an example of transport facilities. So if employees are being picked from home and are being dropped at the workplace, it means uh, the workers will try to be on the transport services and are able to arrive in the work environment <clears throat> in good time to be able to start their activities. So the efficiency levels in those kind of organizations are likely to be high. So Lana, this is a range, this are range, uh, these ones are, are uh, maybe ranges of uh, 
employee welfare services that can be provided. And uh, as you deal with issues of uh, uh, human resource administration, you are likely to be involved in the processes of either uh, creating a policy, administering, or revising this particular kind of uh, welfare services. So today in our lesson, we have looked at uh, three things. We have looked at what is meant by employee welfare services. We have looked at the type of employee uh, welfare services. We have also looked at the advantages of providing employee welfare services. And we can very quickly run through this. So we have said, dear learner, that uh, employee welfare services may be provided for matters concerning employees. These matters are concerning employees. And these matters may not immediately uh, be concerned with their jobs, although they may be connected uh, generally and uh, employee welfare services we have indicated may be provided as individual or group services. And in our two parts that we, uh, the, the other second part we have looked at are <coughs> types of employee welfare services. And we have said, number one, when it comes to types of employee welfare services, we have talked about uh, transport services, number one. We have also mentioned canteen services, number two. We have mentioned treatment, number three. We have uh, talked about uh, employee counseling, number four. We have uh, mentioned bereavement services, number five. We have uh, indicated club and professional membership, number six. Number seven, pre-retirement training services. Number eight, housing and accommodation or accommodation services. Uh, number nine, subsidized, subsidized loans provided by the employer. Number 10, sporting facilities like playgrounds and maybe a gym. Uh, number 11, sponsorship for education and training, which may be for the members of staff or the children of members of staff and other relatives. So those ones are types of employee uh, welfare services. Then when we came and looked at the advantages uh, of providing uh, employee welfare services, we have indicated that one uh, may help in improving employee engagement. Number two, increase employee productivity. Number three, attract prospective employees. Number four, enhance employee as an employer of choice. Number five, increase the level of employee retention. Number six, increase employee health and well-being. Number seven, bring about a better corporate image. Number eight, minimize the level of conflicts in an organization. Number nine, a better quality work can be realized. And number 10, increase efficiency and levels. So dear Lana, this was our topic for today. And uh, before we finish our uh, lesson for today, uh, you have an assignment and uh, your assignment is assignment discuss the types discuss the types of uh, employee uh, welfare uh, services uh, that uh, may be provided that may be provided that may be provided to employees uh, in an organization. So dear Lana, <laughs> this is your assignment. Our lesson today was employee welfare services and uh, uh, this, uh, so the topic human resource administration in the human resource management uh, subject. And uh, the assignment for today, discuss the types, discuss the types of employee welfare services that may be provided to employees in an organization. So dear Lana, we have come to the end of our lesson until our next lesson. Thank you for actively participating.